Welcome, class. Where is everyone? I only see Hermione. Today we'll learn the incendio spell, which is useful against all manner of dangerous plants. You're shitting me. I had to get through a big ass maze where I desperately needed that spell to reach the classroom where I would be learning it. This sort of looks like a sexual part of the female body. It has labia minora at the bottom, the larger labia majora around the sides, and maybe the tip of the clitoral hood at the top. First rate incendio, Mr. Potter. First rate indeed. I guess it could also look like a cartoony spaceship if you think about it hard enough. What else could it look like? Maybe a wizard or witch's hat with built in earmuffs? I bet I know where Neville is. He's probably the kind of guy that would sit in the back of the classroom quietly keeping to himself. That is an outstanding incendio for a first year. Ten points for Gryffindor. Let's continue with the lesson, Mr. Potter. What else is there to say about this? I even resorted to making a vaginal joke, and I feel very... unsatisfied right now. I really don't care for these drawing exercises. Hardly counts as a joke, actually. Just an observation. A first-rate incendio, Mr. Potter. Fifteen points for Gryffindor. Let's continue with the lesson, Mr. I mean, sure, I could cut this out, but I just have this arbitrary rule where, for the most part, I present the whole thing, the good and the boring, and I try to say something about all of it. But sometimes I can't, and I have to go meta, or just talk about something totally unrelated. That is an outstanding incendio for a first year. Twenty points for Gryffindor. Now it's time for the incendio challenge. I guess people arrived late while I was practicing my inappropriate drawings. Those are spiky bushes. You may cast incendio on them, but step back to avoid their needles. Okay, don't touch the needles. Got it. Ouch! Uh, you know, it would have been helpful if during your warning, you mentioned that it would literally shoot needles at me. Fucking hell, not these turd-shaped shits again. But, I don't know, how the fuck did I let that thing hit me? This is a typical species of venomous tentacula. Cast incendio to wilt it. Incendio! Now make the challenge stars to complete your lesson. Away you go! I was gonna complain about the fact incendio. that this Professor Sprout also doesn't look like the character from the movie, but then I realized she wasn't in the first movie, at least I don't think she was, even as a background character, and initially appeared in the second film. The second film was released in 2002, while this game was released in late 2001, exactly one year earlier, on November 15th. So they couldn't have made the in-game character look like the actor. Eh, eh, oh well. Did he just cough from getting stabbed in the balls? Yep, just going around opening chests again. How interesting. I like to clean my belly button. 
I like to keep it nice and clean. If I don't clean my belly button, it will turn a fungus green. Yeah. There's something secret in here, and I'm going to find it. There we go. That didn't do anything. I guess there are more behind the other shelves, and nothing will happen until I hit all of them. I hit both of those shelves and flipendo buttons from this distance. Oh, neat. That would be a pretty cool hideout, actually. Of course, these walking potatoes would have found it first. But yeah, pretty cool hideout, though. I really wish this didn't have to interrupt the flow of the game though. I just want to walk over I just want to walk over it and pick it up automatically and keep moving. Is that too much to ask? Sure, the little animation was cool the first couple of times I saw it, but this is just getting annoying now. Oh, there's a raven claw girl in here. Those vines are attacking that poor tree. Who gives a shit? It broke the ceiling anyways. I don't think running into it... Oh, never mind. You're gone anyways. It's the wrong way, too. I'm not sure how you intend to complete the lesson. Oh, god damn it, it touched my hair. And I still missed. What's the problem here anyways? Who wouldn't love a bunch of tentacles wrapped around their wood? Jesus! All oh, those branches can move! How in the fuck? No! Yeah, I know, the answer's magic, but fuck, man. Imagine your arm and the bones inside of it moving down from your shoulder all the way to your hip. What a fucking painful and horrific thought. Like, the skin on the side of your torso would have to tear itself below the descending armpit to move out of the way of the arm and then reform on top like a zipper and... Gah, what the fuck? Of course, if all that can happen, then I don't see why we can't grow bean trees in the wizarding world either. Also, in a world full of magic, where you can do pretty much anything, there should be no reason that your fucking doors make squeaky noises when you open them. Even if for some stupid reason there was no spell to fix that, you have the muggle world where you can just get a can of WD-40 or something. Jeez. Oh, wait. Better get my running jump first. Neat. This is like some kids next door type of treehouse. Except there's magic and man-eating plants everywhere instead of muggle 2x4 technology. Incendio. Incendio. What am I even doing to this? Is it, is it just a stun spell, essentially? Except you need a different incantation to affect mobile plant life? Speaking of plant life and stunning other plants, I wonder how Bulbasaur would do against something like this. If it used Stun Spore or Sleep Powder and it worked at all, it would probably last a lot longer than the spell, which seems to wear off after about five seconds. Okay, I can't even reach from there. For fuck's sake, why does the game have to be so picky about how I'm angled relative to whatever I'm casting a spell at? 
Okay, let's see here. Two, three, four, five. They knew it. It's about five seconds that it stays down. Maybe it's because a first year's spell power is limited. I don't know. When that music starts playing, you know what you're about to find. We're now so familiar with gnomes that we can hear them through this music before we actually see them. Like it's a theme song they share with Red and George. I bet various Pokemon would do just fine dealing with a bunch of gnomes all at once. I wonder which type would be the most effective against magic. Maybe psychic types? Their moves in the anime are practically like magic to begin with, although ghost types might be immune to some stuff as well. If you had other types of Pokemon dealing with bushes that die like a suicide bomber, you might try to blast it with fire all at once, or maybe just freeze the whole thing. Or a psychic type could do a barrier move to protect you from the projectiles. Actually, isn't, th isn't there a shield charm or something? I think the incantation is Prego or Protego or something. Wouldn't that have been a better first lesson to learn in defense against the dark arts? I mean, don't get me wrong, Flipendo has been useful so far, but... Still, you can literally die in some of these places in Hogwarts. I'm sure whatever mechanism this activates doesn't need three of these switches. It's just gonna bounce up and down? Okay then. But unless it was a security feature, like ICBM launch keys with locks placed on opposite ends of a room or something, then why would you need three? How the fuck did you drop that? Is that a tank full of milk? Okay, so a frog will just jump right out sometimes. Sort of like how one time it was pouring rain and I had to clean out a drain so that the garage in my house wouldn't get water in it. And speaking of water, that's an incredibly wasteful way of watering your plants. Again with the squeaking doors, that's so unnecessary in a world full of magic that could also access a few cans of WD-40 in the muggle world. But anyways, I had to scoop out leaves and stuff from the drain and lit and I felt something slimy and a toad that was hiding there jumped out and scared the shit out of me. And I missed another gnome. Sometimes it sounds shitty when you blame the game instead of your own skill, or lack thereof, because you might be perceived as a sore loser or something, but... Really, the control is very difficult to master because the mouse speed seems inconsistent and stiff. And when it feels stiff, you feel like you have to move the mouse even faster to compensate, which may lead you to overshooting your target instead. Fortunately, this isn't a game that's too hard in many other respects, so... You can at least make mistakes and not be fucked over too much, it's just annoying as shit. And this right here is a goddamn abomination. So Flipendo can push a large stone pillar out of the way, but it doesn't fucking explode a shrub of leaves or push them backwards at a speed like hurricane winds. More of these spiky pube testicles? Why do you even have these? What purpose do they serve? Does some part of the plant give you an antidote for something? Why would you grow these out in the open if you need to harvest them? Stick them in a cage that's cloaked in a strong net and run the fuck away when you cast a spell at them. <coughs> Jesus. At least they keep frogs on standby. Actually, I'll grab whatever's in the other chest first. Oh, nothing back there. Flipendo! 
Why do we need to cast Flipendo to push a block out of the way to access another Flipendo button? What's the point of having the block there? I expected another gnome hiding in a hole or something. It's totally redundant. See? The gate doesn't make an irritating screeching noise when it moves. Okay, I have very mixed feelings here. On the one hand, dealing with these giraffe-necked shits is going to be a pain in the ass. On the other hand... This blacklight atmosphere in a dark tunnel-looking area with neon-glowing monsters is pretty cool! What am I trying to do here? Does defeating these make the door open somehow? They'll just wake up again. I guess I have to go up here. How does shit like that even happen? I really do like the lighting in here, though. Meanwhile, I bet the mechanism to open the door is up here in this more naturally lit area. Hope this doesn't go too high or this is going to be tedious. Nah, we're good. Here we go. Fuck that noise. That's just... so irritating. Oh, interesting hiding place. I guess there might be a few people who would miss this challenge star. Okay, I didn't need to climb back up. You could have just kept falling, Harry. I only need to stun one of these to get by, right? I guess so. No, I've... I've had enough of mazes for one lifetime. Dang it. I don't want to do this again. Wait, maybe this isn't really a maze. Maybe it's just... Maybe it's just a twisting path with no side routes. Okay, well that wasn't so bad. It helps that I knew how to defeat these stupid planes so didn't have to navigate through them before learning the Incendio spell. Cool, I get to jump over everything now. I'm surprised the hedges can hold my weight. Try walking on a hedge in real life and see how well that works out. Yes. I'm levitating now. Just... Why? Why does that even happen? Please... Let me be done with this. Please. Please. God damn it. I have to turn on a water fountain now. For fuck's sake, I still can't get over how you can miss a spell at point blank range. What the fuck did that do? That's weird. You can just bring them back down. Oh yeah, I must have opened this door. Yes, I'm finally through this shit. Congratulations, Mr. Potter. You completed the challenge. You've collected all the challenge stars. 20 points for Gryffindor. Now off you go. Okay, well at least I got everything. And now... I don't even know what's coming next.